my name is Kellen Vanetti and um, I work down the street and I think uh, genetically modified food is a um, it's an okay idea um, some of the uh, things that we're doing with genetic engineering can um, provide uh, a more a better a better source of, of um, nutrients for uh, consumers and um, that's that's it. I think that that sometimes it can help and uh, it can weed out um, detrimental uh, elements to to fruit and vegetables. Are there any downsides that you know about? Not not that I know of. No. My name is Harriet Phillips, and I'm co-chairman of the committee for one, and we work with the West Santa Barbara Hello. committee to get a sphere of influence over the Goleta Valley that is not a portion of. Uh, the city of Goleta or of the city of Santa Barbara. And we just had a meeting with the city council of Santa Barbara and they voted to uh, put us on their agenda and send a letter to LAFCO saying that they approve of the sphere of influence that we want over us by Santa Barbara. So we're very happy people right now and we're sure that uh, the LAFCO is going to listen to what the city fathers have said and it was a unanimous vote, by the way, so there's no uh, distinction of anybody uh, trying to say no to us. We've worked very hard for this. We started about six years ago, and we give a lot of credit to the West Santa Barbara Committee because they helped get uh, about 4,000 signatures on a petition drive with citizens signing, saying they, they want to be under the sphere of influence of the city of Santa Barbara. So this is like our insurance policy because we're not the part that wants to be with the city of Goleta. And the city of Goleta doesn't want us either. <laughs> so uh, we're in a happy frame of mind right now. Thank you. I'm Louise Harvey. I like the farmer's market because they, they got good produce, flowers, and the people enjoy coming. Bye-bye. My name is Ron Smith. Uh, I'm in San I live here in Santa Barbara. Uh, we're regulars at the farmer's market, um, primarily to avoid genetically engineered foods. I have been trained as a scientist. Um, my normal approach to thing is, th things is to slice it, dice it, do a double-blind study. Um, you know, and I really I really like to look through things carefully before uh, I commit to them. Um, I don't think there's been an appropriate amount of research done on genetically engineered foods. I think they pose a potential health hazard. Um, I think the government, uh, although I am anti-big government, I, I don't think we've done enough research on this. And I think we're doing a great disservice to our children and our children's children. Thanks. This is Chiquita. We thought we'd just uh, give a couple minutes to tell you how wonderful Santa Barbara is, how beautiful the weather is, and how much they love all the little perritos and puppies. And uh, hopefully not to be using too many bad things in uh, all the vegetables and fruits that we buy here at the wonderful farmer's market. Here as well as uh, over on the Camino Real, down the State Street, here on Fairview. Uh, we love it so much, we hope it continues, and we always like to see the no pesticides and organically grown fruit and vegetables. We love you, Santa Barbara. My name is Jean Thompson. I'm a citizen of Santa Barbara County. Um, and this week, or this month, is bike month. So we, I'm working at my school to try and get as many people as possible to ride their bikes to school, get parents to ride their bikes to school, get teachers. I think it's really important on many, many levels. One, it creates a sense of community. If everybody's out on their bike, they can all talk to each other and say hi, and it helps clean up the air and reduce noise pollution and congestion and wear and tear on our streets. and. There's a crisis with global warming right now that not enough people are talking about and the more that we don't drive our cars, the better off life will be. So um, 
that's one of my big issues is to get people out of their cars and onto their bicycles or walking. Um, and the other big issue that I have right now is the Iraq war, which I think is a travesty for our country. And um, I think that I just wrote a letter to the editor in the LA Times saying, uh, calling Bush to task for criticizing Newsweek about desecrating the Koran, but not only did he lie to get us into the Iraq war, not only and caused thousands and thousands of people to die, they're still dying every single day and he's never retracted it and never admitted that he's ever made any mistake and I think he's really ruining our reputation in the world and I love our country and I want our country to do well in the world and I feel like with George Bush as president it's going the absolute other way. So I guess my big issues are the environment which is why I'm here buying food at organic food at the uh, farmers market and um, the world. <laughs> and I think you know we need to send, foster a sense of community both at the local level and in the world level. And so we need to not have George Bush as our president. Thank you. Hi, I'm Suri Gould, and they've asked me to talk about genetically modified foods. And what I would say is I think it's really important in starving countries for people to have food to eat. And if that means that we have to do that, then I think it's important that we do it. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, my name is Susan, and as I walked by, I was asked what I thought of genetically engineered foods. That's what I think. Hi, my name is Don George. I'm here today at the Goleta Farmer's Market. Just came back from a trip down to New Zealand, a wonderful country down under. My son lives down there, and I've gone down there for 20 years now to visit him and his family. What impresses me in New Zealand is what I find here in the farmer's market, that connection to the earth, the connection to good, fresh produce, fruits. Um, makes no sense to go to a market and buy the plastic wrapped fruit when one can get the real things from the earth and not only support uh, your own body, but support the whole community. So, viva la farmer's market, let's keep supporting them. Thanks. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm here today at the uh, farmer's market in Goleta and I want to talk to you about genetically altered food. I think it's a bad idea and uh, definitely I would avoid it like the plague. Uh, I'm very much into organic food, so that's the way to go. Let's say why. You know why? Can you give me some information about genetically modified food? Why? Uh, I mean, I don't know the real whys, but I mean, anytime you start fooling around with nature, you're changing the DNA structure, you know, you don't know what you're dealing with. I mean, sometimes uh, these things could be discovered and, you know, immediately, or they could be discovered 30 years from now that you've had the ill effect of these, uh, any modified foods. So. That's all I know. I don't know the very specifics, though. I'm uh, Jose Madrinan, and uh, I know a lot about GMOs. Um, I think they're uh, okay for certain people, depending on uh, what your needs and preferences are. Um, I think I think GMOs are uh, related to technology, and uh, and if we think advances in technology like non-GMO. Uh, if you if you think that there are normal there are normal development of human kind uh, technology development, that's uh, I, I would call that part of evolution. Uh, although some people may think GMOs are not present on, on in, you know in nature uh, per se, but we're part of nature, and if we're modifying nature, I think that's part of normal evolution. Okay, I'm Jay Rollins, and I'm going to talk about the genetically modified foods being imported into here, California by Canadian truck drivers. I am totally offended that foods can be modified in the same way as embryo cells and that people should consider eating such weird substances. I mean, like, you know, like there was the atom bombs and there was all this radiation and stuff and the fluid glowed and everything. And that's the way I feel when I hear the word genetically modified foods. I mean, I don't really know what they are, but just hearing those terms uh, makes me not want to eat again. Hi, I'm Melissa. 
I'm Megan. Okay. In L. No, I don't. I cannot say. Well, we're concerned about the Russian thistle taking over Elwood Mesa because it's really poking and dangerous. And pretty soon everything else is going to be gone, and it's only going to have this ugly Russian thistle that's taking over. And it's really dangerous if you're walking or you're riding your bike, and you can fall in it, and you'll really hurt yourself because it's so pokey. <laughs> pokey. Um, how do you feel, Megan? You put me this. Um, I just think it like really it doesn't look good at all. Cause Elwood Mesa, it's all it's a pretty place, and then there's like green grass, but then there's it's like it's the beautiful part of Galita. But then you come along and you're like, this plant looks like a briar patch, and it looks it's not good looking, and it's scary. <laughs> it is scary, and they're really tall and they're taking over everything. Um, I don't know. What about the genetically modified? Okay. Um, I don't really like that idea. I don't really like the idea of genetically modified foods. Also, why? Why? Because why don't we just eat it the way it was before? I mean, it's what other people did before us, and they seem to live just fine. And it's I don't care how red my tomatoes are, because I like orange ones. <laughs> I like heirloom ones. The ones with all the different colors. <laughs> yeah. And um, I had something. I like zucchini. It's just a waste of time and trying to make something look perfect because we don't live in a world of perfection. So yeah, why, it, why do it doesn't that? matter if it looks that good because you're going to eat it anyways. So, genetically modifying is a, it's a no-no. It's a waste. It's a waste. Just keep, keep things natural. Natural. Okay. Organic. Organic, that's the word. <laughs> Organic. <laughs> Hi, I want to talk a little bit about genetically modified organisms. Um, I'm a member of a group called Santa Barbara GE Free, and we're trying to create a, either a complete ban or a moratorium on the use of genetically modified organisms in Santa Barbara County. Now, what are the issues of GMOs? The big one is that GMO seeds cross-pollinate with any domesticated or wild plant in our environment. This is huge, folks. If we have our seed stock completely polluted by G GMO seed, it will devastate agriculture in Santa Barbara County. As an organic farmer, I'm trying to organize a group of other organic farmers to help fight the issue of GMOs in Santa Barbara County. The other big opposition to GMOs to me is that they are being marketed as using less chemicals in our environment, which is total BS. The biggest GMO product being used right now is a product called Roundup Ready. Roundup Ready is a product or a, a genetically modified organism that has been bred to withstand the herbicide Roundup. So all over the world at this point, seed is being planted and it's the commodity crops corn and soybeans and canola all the crops that people think are safe and they're being farmed in a way that's totally unsafe for public health and our environment so a roundup ready seed is will, will tolerate the herbicide roundup and a lot of times they apply it either with large tractors or by aerial spraying and so all this Roundup goes into our watershed, into our oceans, and pollutes our environment. The question of how safe Roundup is for people to consume is a great question. We have to be more aware of chemicals in our foods, especially foods like soybeans, which people who are health conscious buy as a first choice vegetable. So I'm not only, not only concerned about protecting our environment from GMOs, but also feel strongly that GMOs in packaged food should be labeled. Right now, there's no requirements at all to label GMO produced seed. That's outrageous. So if you want to get in touch with me and want to be a member of our group, 
You can always find me at any of the Santa Barbara Farmers Markets and I'd be happy to talk to you. Can you talk a little bit about um, what they're modifying these foods with and why? Um, <clears throat> Uh, the two predominant GMO products on the market right now are Roundup Ready, and then there's, uh, for corn, there is corn that's been treated for BT. BT actually kills worms when they are exposed to it, but prior to this, BT has been a safe and accepted spray and control of worms in organic production for a long time. Now, why should there be any concern about something being gen genetically modified with a product like BT? Well, the, one of the biggest fears is the, is the idea that the worms will become completely ineffective. The, the BT will become ineffective because they'll become uh, just adjusted to all the BT in our environment that's being used on millions and millions of acres of corn. Um, among the other biz most bizarre things that I've heard that they're doing with GMOs is that a, a plant breeder in Japan has bred petunias so that they glow in the dark and they've taken uh, organisms from glow, uh, glow uh, worms and glow moths and inserted them into a seed and they have now developed petunias that glow in the dark. So. One of the big issues that most people don't understand is that it's not just cross-breeding plants with other plants. It's completely different organisms from different, different uh, genes. And we don't know what the implications are in the future, and there's a lot of unknown factors. But the biotech companies that are developing the seed that's being used acknowledge that they do cross-pollinate. And like I said to begin with, that is, my, to me, the biggest issue. I'm Dennis Story, and I'm the chair of CoastalRailNow.org. We have a website, and we're a project of Coast, Coalition for Sustainable Transportation. Grant House is the president of that group. And we just got awarded a $3,600 grant from the Fund for Santa Barbara to help promote the commuter rail between Oxnard and Goleta. And as you know, the congestion is a big issue. I'm a stakeholder on the 101 in Motion project where we are trying to solve this congestion problem with packages of solutions, of which commuter rail is one of those solutions. Of the final four packages of solutions, commuter rail is in three of them and is uh, very well supported by the community and by the Santa Barbara City Council. We will be at the downtown farmers market on Saturday morning and you will see us more visibly at the farmers markets around town and that would be our Coastal Rail Now project we have brochures and bumper stickers and we'd like to inform you about the potential of a commuter rail service between Oxnard and, and Goleta. We're very encouraged and we really appreciate the help from Fund for Santa Barbara in helping promote our project. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brent Franklin. I'm a Santa Barbara local, and um, I think uh, these new foods suck. I don't think they should be uh, modified at all. I want my stuff organic. Thank you. Okay, hello, my name is Stephen Wyatt Sachs, and we're going to be talking about genetic modification. And I believe that means the changes in genes in order to uh, suppress or express uh, a character of a fruit or a vegetable maybe a person too, in which case I can think of several people. I would like to have their genes perhaps suppressed. President Bush may be a, a candidate for this. You know, <laughs> uh, but in itself, I'm pro-science. As a biology major at Cal Poly Pomona, and now I have a nursery, Windstream Nursery, where I sell bonsai and bamboo, and I've seen genetic modification work wonders. I think it's what it's intended for. 
I think we can all get on our soapbox, oh, genetically modified food is all bad. I disagree with that uh, preposition. I think there are some cases where it may be very helpful if it allows us to suppress certain genes that have gone array. Thank you very much. Hi, this is Ray. And uh, I came out by, by La Cumbre here at the mall to see the flowers. And I love flowers so well that I come over and get them. Uh, they help me out a lot. Uh, they give me a very good meeting of the day. You know, so, uh, you know, I want to thank the person to uh, say a few things, but I just can't remember anything. I'm not that kind of guy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'll see what I can do. Cut it off. <laughs> Yeah, well, the flowers are super, you know, they make a lot of difference to where I live, you know, my little, little apartment. And uh, I talk to them, and they talk back to me. And it lasts a little bit longer and a little bit better. Okay? Thank you. My name is Jim, and this is Angie. She's 14, and this is Serena, is 5. And they both want to run today. And I want to talk a little bit about dog owners who don't pick up after their dogs who I think give us a bad, all a bad reputation. There's two things in this town. One is there's an anti-litter law and there's a leash law in Santa Barbara. And I would encourage everyone to, who has a dog to pick up after their dogs. I happen to carry, fortunately, these little baggies with me all the time. And I have an opinion that anybody who doesn't pick up their dog shouldn't have the right to own a dog. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mark Guevara, and I'm 17, a junior in high school. And um, last year there was like a, I don't know what, they changed the rules saying you can't wear Raiders jerseys, but you can wear any other jersey. And Raiders my favorite team. And so we just all got together and boycotted it and told them that wasn't fair because all gangsters don't wear Raider jerseys. So one day we just all got together and went into class and boycotted it, talked to the principal, and they thought about it. We just talked, like, arguing, all that. And then they ended up overturning, and I, I thought that was cool because it showed how students are sticking up for themselves now. They're not too, they're not, like, just letting everything go. Like, if they believe in something, they're going to say it. They just, I, know, I thought it was cool. <laughs> I think if, I don't know, on the war, I don't think people should, like, they should let women go to the war. I think people should stick up for that. But if they think it's fine, then it's on them. But I don't, know, I don't really believe in the whole war thing. And I don't know what else. <laughs> Why? Because it's, I don't know, it's lame. <laughs> They send people like over 18, and I'm not saying they basically get killed, but like they have like a what, 75% chance of dying, and it's like they haven't even lived their whole life, haven't done anything they wanted to do. So I don't, I don't back up the war. <laughs> yeah. I'm Blanca Gonzalez, and I'm here in Santa Barbara. I came to a doctor's appointment. And I came by here and I was interested in the topic of genetically made food. Um, I think that it should be a natural process when we're buying our foods, just like here at the farmer's market. I think organic is the way to go. Um, I feel that, you know, especially for our children, which are our future generation, they need foods and they need to be nutritious, but they also be, have to be free of, you know, any um, artificially or anything extra uh, so that they could have the best foods and they deserve the best. Hi, my name is Margot Von Poole and I don't agree with genetically modified foods. We don't know what they do or where they'll go or how they'll destroy the good seeds that are on the planet. There's no way to know how in 20 years they're going to be utilized by the body. And I'm really glad that the organic movement is taking effect and also people are saving old seeds so that they can be replanted and keep the earth alive. Yes. So, eat organic. I'm sorry. Any other issues? Any other issues? 
Boy, where do you start? <laughs> There's always issues, but we all have to address one issue. No one person can solve every problem, but with millions of people on the earth, they can get together with people who are interested in that project and solve a lot of problems. My name is Christy Curtis. Um, I do not agree with genetically modified foods. I think that it's really important for people to become aware of their community seasons and the food that grow in season. And the other issue that I wanted to talk about was um, is the word organic and what it means to be certified organic at the farmers market because I think it's really important for people to be mindful that there are a lot of small farms and small time farmers that actually like invented organic farming that don't have the, the, the resources or the funds to actually get certified and it is a timely process and it costs a lot of money um, so I, I would like to say that it's really important for you to ask at the market to see who is you know not just certified but who uses sprays and to get a background on the farm not just because they're they're certified organic.